Hi, I used Burnett Blanket Yarn. It's a super bulky six weight yarn in smoky green, vintage white, and blush pink, and a 10 millimeter crochet hook. This is a chevron pattern, and it's all single crochet, one row repeat, so it's super simple. I'm calling it the Mountain Sunrise Blanket. It's 36 inches by 52 inches. I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. All right, let's get right into the pattern. I'm gonna chain 88. Come into the second chain from the hook with a single crochet. All of our stitches will be single crochet. You're going to begin with two single crochet every row will uh, begin the same and end the same two single crochet space when you're coming to the end end of the row it'll be a space and two single crochet this is a one row repeat all single crochet so skip one and then we're going to do 12 single crochet single crochet into the next 12 stitches that was two three, four, five, it's going to curl up on you, don't worry about it, six, seven, it's going to straighten itself out later, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12. Now we're going to make our first mountain stitch. It's going to go up because we're doing an increase here. Three single crochet into the same stitch. Right back into that same stitch. Two and three. And that's going to bring this up. And then we'll come back down now with another 12 single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Keep moving your work right in front of you and keep straightening out your chain. That was ten, eleven, and twelve. Very important to keep your stitch count correct. So that was our mountain stitch. So we want to come down and do a dip or a valley now. They'll be alternating. All right, so we're going to put your hook into this next stitch. Bring your yarn through, skip a stitch, go into this stitch, bring your yarn through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and come through all three. And that's going to give you your, your little dip or your valley. All right, another 12 single crochet. Two, make sure your chain is straight. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Even though these are just single crochets, it works up really quickly. It's a very easy pattern. Nine. Ten. Eleven and twelve. Uh, because the yarn is so thick and bulky and oh my goodness, is this ever cushy. It works up quickly. So our last pattern part of our pattern here was a dip or a valley so now we're going to go back to a mountain 
So in the next stitch, three single crochet. One, oops, get in there. Two and three. And then just another 12 single crochet. One, two, three. If you keep bringing your work right in front of you, you don't run the risk of having your stitches uneven. Four, I believe that was four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. The next row and the following rows after that are even easier because you just work into your mountains and your valleys. So that was 12. I had a mountain there, so I know I need to do a valley here. Go into that first stitch, pull the yarn through, skip the next stitch, go into the next stitch, pull the yarn through. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. And another 12 single crochet. See how easy this is? One, two, three, four. I really like it in this Bernat blanket. It's like a chenille. It just gives it a different look and feel. It's just so thick and cozy. All right, where was I? One, two, three, four, five, six. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, where were we? Our last one was a dip. So now we need a mountain. And so that means three single crochet in one stitch. Two and three. That's really just an increase. And the other is a decrease. And 12 more. One. We're almost at the end. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you should have three stitches left, three chains. One, two, three. This doesn't count because that's your slip knot. All right, so skip one. Every row is going to end the same. Skip one stitch, single crochet into the last two stitches. One and two. And then you can pull that. So that's that's our pattern. I'm gonna take you through the second row. Chain one. When I'm working with this thicker yarn, I just use one finger to hold it. Otherwise the tension gets too tight for me. All right, single crochet in the first two. It's going to look like this is going out, but it's not when you're you have your zigzag. This is actually your your side edge. It's going to be very straight. Okay, one, two, single crochet, skip one, and 12. 
now you're working into the full stitch instead of just that chain. It's even easier. One, two, three, four, five. I find this yarn very easy to work with. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. This is what I wanted to show you. When you get to twelve, you're going to be in that first single crochet of your three in a row. So that's 12. And then you're going to work your next three single crochet into the top of that middle single crochet. And that, that will make your stitch grow, your mountain, your zigzag, your chevron. It's called all kinds of things, but I am making it look like a mountain. For a specific uh, blanket. One, two, three, and twelve more. Single crochet. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And we should be, we should have worked our way into our next dip. And we have. We're going to go into this next stitch. Pull your yarn through, skip a stitch, go into this stitch, pull your yarn through. That's just a decrease. Pull through all three loops. And you can really see it forming now. I'll take you through to the end of the row. One, two, three. Four, five, six, oops, seven, eight, nine, ten, bring it over, eleven, and twelve should be going into that first single crochet there of the three. That was my 12th stitch. So now on the top of that, one, two, and three. Another 12, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, oops, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We should be at a dip because our last one was the mountain. Now we're at a valley. We are indeed. You can see how it dips down. We're going to go into that stitch, pull through, skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, pull through, and pull through all three loops. Another 12, single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. My twelfth stitch is into that first 
of the three single crochet. If you wanted it to grow even faster, you could do half double crochet. I wanted my stitches to be a little bit tight, a little, a little more dense. All right, so into the top of that single crochet, we make three single crochet together. And that's our last little mountain stitch of this row. 12 more single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <clears throat> ten, eleven, twelve. You should have three stitches, and I do. Skip one, single crochet into the last two, chain one and turn. You're going to continue this pattern. Every row is the same. You can see how the mountains and valleys are really, really starting to show up now. It's so pretty. And you can see how the edge will be straightening itself out. So 12 rows all together if you're following my pattern, 12 rows of this smoky green. I'll meet you at the end of the 12th row to do the color change to the vintage white. Okay, I'm at the end of row 12. It's pretty easy to count your rows just at the end here. At the end of each row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this is 12. Or you can put your fingers in here and count the holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we're going to do a simple color change. I already cut my yarn. I left a long tail. I started a single crochet, but I left the last two loops. I'm going to bring in my new color, my vintage white. I like to wrap. We are going to have some ends to weave in, but it's really easy with this yarn. I like to wrap that tail around. Bring this through. And I'm going to include that tail in my chain one. Just helps lock it in. And with this nice thick yarn, it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to make it look weird. All right, chain one and turn. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a light, just a loose tie there. And we'll weave those in later and life will be good. All right, we're just going to continue with this pattern. This is your very first stitch. So two, one, two, single crochet, skip one, and 12. One, two, three, Four. I just want you to see how pretty it looks. Five, six, got big really fast. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And we worked our way up to the top of the mountain. Three single crochet. One, two, and three. It looks a little different on this side. It actually looks more like snow on this side, I think. Snow on top of a mountain. Isn't that pretty? So you're going to continue, same pattern. Okay, I ended up making four rows of the vintage white. I decided to go with an even number of rows for each color. 
I'm going to keep the green for the mountain color as the primary or prominent color. I'm switching over now to the blush pink. So start your single crochet, but don't complete it. Leave the, leave the two loops. Wrap your yarn. Come through with your new color. Keep the tail in and chain one. Turn. And you can either tie these right now and weave them in later, or you can go under, make your first single crochet, and then tie them, or you can continue to, or you, now you can continue to uh, pull those along with you and hide them. I'm going to come in later and weave them in. But this way you're pulling them away from the edge so the edge stays nice and even and soft. Okay, so this is our second single crochet. I just want you to see how this color looks. It's gonna be our sunrise color. Skip one and then 12. Single crochet. 12 is your favorite number today. Raise your hand if you started to go to 13 at some point. I did, I did. <laughs> and then my brain just reminds me, no, no 13, only 12 and two. All right, I know it's 12 because I'm in that first single crochet of the three, but let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, always make sure. And then your three at the top of the mountain to make yourself another mountain top for the mountain sunrise. Isn't that pretty? So I just wanted to include a little bit of a soft pink for a baby's room, but any uh, other shades of green, blues, purples, beige, any any color combination you want would be really pretty, but isn't this so nice and simple? Look how soft and cushy that is. Oh my goodness. Just gonna squish it. All right, so six rows of the blush pink. It's going to be half as wide as the green. And then we're going to go right back into the green because it's peeking up over that sunrise. And then some more snow, the vintage white, four rows. And then back into the pink, six rows. And then again, 12 rows of the green. Okay, I ended up making four rows of the vintage white. I decided to go with an even number of rows for each color. I'm going to keep the green for the mountain color as the primary or prominent color. I'm switching over now to the blush pink. So start your single crochet, but don't complete it. Leave the, leave the two loops. Wrap your yarn, come through with your new color, keep the tail in, and chain one. Turn. And you can either tie these right now and weave them in later, or you can go under. Make your first single crochet and then tie them, or you can continue to, or you, now you can continue to uh, pull those along with you and hide them. I'm going to come in later and weave them in. But this way you're pulling them away from the edge so the edge stays nice and even and soft. Okay, so this is our second single crochet. I just want you to see how this color looks. 
going to be our sunrise color. Skip one, and then 12. Single crochet. 12 is your favorite number today. Raise your hand if you started to go to 13 at some point. I did, I did. <laughs> and then my brain just reminds me, no, no 13, only 12 and two. All right, I know it's 12 because I'm in that first single crochet of the three, but let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Yes, always make sure. And then your three at the top of the mountain to make yourself another mountain top for the mountain sunrise. Isn't that pretty? So I just wanted to include a little bit of a soft pink for a baby's room, but any uh, other shades of green, blues, purples, beige, any any color combination you want would be really pretty, but isn't this so nice and simple? Look how soft and cushy that is. Oh my goodness. Just gonna squish it. All right, so six rows of the blush pink. It's going to be half as wide as the green. And then we're going to go right back into the green because it's peeking up over that sunrise. And then some more snow, the vintage white, four rows. And then back into the pink, six rows. And then again, 12 rows of the green. And I believe I'm going to straighten out my peaks here. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll come back and show you how to do that if that's what I decide to do. See how the edges are coming out nice and straight? It's so simple and so fast. You could, you could definitely make this in a day if you had the day to work on it. Works up very, very quickly. All right, well, I'll see you when I figure out how, how many uh, stripes here I'm going to make. Not sure how long I want to make it just yet. See you in a bit. Okay, I completely changed my mind. I had filled in all of these valleys to make it go straight across. And I didn't like the way it turned out. So all I'm going to do is come across with two rows of the vintage white and two rows of the blush pink and just make a few decreases so it just softens this deep V up a little bit. So it'll end up with the snow and the sunset colors. So that was my 12th row of my third section of the green. And now we're going to add the vintage white for two rows. And like I said, all it's going to do is soften it up. We'll do the very same thing on the bottom. Turn. You can tie those ends together and weave them in later. Make sure you're in that very first stitch there. And come through all those loops for your first single crochet and two. And now we're going to single crochet two stitches together and pull through all three of those loops. And then we're just going to go up to the peak. When you get to the peak, you're still going to have to make another three single crochet in one stitch because that's the only way that you can round that corner without it pulling. You could put a chain in, but then that would leave a little bit of a hole and I didn't want to do that. All right, now we have reached the top. That's your peak, that's the middle 
single crochet of the three together. So again, three single crochet together. And back down. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna make some decreases. The blanket got very big. Between the blanket getting so big and the fact that I change my mind a lot when I'm making a blanket is why I usually only do a sample. But I decided to continue on with this. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, yes. Six, and I shouldn't keep talking while I'm counting. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're gonna do it a little bit differently than we had been. We're going to single crochet these two together pull it in kind of tight. Do the, the normal single crochet two together, but skipping one at the bottom of our valley. Pull that together, and then another single crochet two together as a decrease. And back up to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> I already recorded this or I thought I did. I didn't, didn't hit the record button. So we started over. All right, back at the top of that peak, we're gonna make another peak. One, two, and three. And back down for 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. It was very nice. You see there was a little knot there. It gets hidden nicely in here because it's so thick and cushy. It was nice to have just single crochets with all the counting going on. All right, single crochet two together. One, two, pull through all three loops. Single crochet two together, but skip the one in the middle. Pull through all three loops, kind of tighten that up. And single crochet two together. Pull through all three loops. Okay. It's, we're just doing the same thing. It'll be a little different on the edge. So you can fast forward if you like to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. <laughs> my, I don't know if you can hear that. It's my dog snorting. She's sleeping on the floor over there. Let's see if I can get her in here. Let's see my yarn. Uh, no, I can't see her. <laughs> They know when I stop counting, but it's pretty boring for a while. <laughs> All right, that's a nice little break. We're back up to the top of the peak. So one, two, three, and back down. One, two, we're on the edge now. That's the side edge. So we wanna go down until we have 
four stitches left. We're gonna go into that one with two together. So I'm not even counting. I'm just gonna find the four stitches left and I'll know that's where I wanna be. One, two, three, four. One more. All right, I have four stitches left, so let's single crochet those two together. It just helps pull that side up. And single crochet in the last two. Chain one and turn, and you're just gonna do the same exact thing. Repeat that row. And I will meet you at the end of this row. Here we are at the end of the second row at the top. So here's your that first single crochet where you pulled in your tail with the chain so it's kind of thick. I'll just go through all of that. Come through, start a single crochet, but don't complete it. Cut your tail because we're going to switch over to the pink sunrise color <laughs> blush pink and just join like we normally do pull through and pull the tail in you can pull those those ends around tie them together and weave in your ends I just want to show you how this is just pulling it together a little bit. It's not so flat out like that. All right, same thing, same exact thing. I'll just take you through this first part. Single crochet one. Make sure you're in that first stitch. Two and single crochet two together. Come all the way up to the top until you reach the peak. The three single crochets at the top where you will make three single crochet into the top. Hang on just a second, I'm gonna pull this back a bit. <laughs> Pretty new to all this video. I started recording crochet videos for my daughter-in-law. And she suggested that I make some YouTube videos and I started to and people seem to like them. One, two, three at the very top of that peak. If you do like it, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up share the video, leave comments. Comments are great. I'm not counting anymore because here's what I'm going to look for. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Uh, come down. <laughs> uh, it matches my blanket in the back here. Find your your middle here where you're going to bring the three stitches together and then come back two, because we'll be putting two together. So I only need to go down two more. I could have counted, but this just worked out for me. Okay, so let's get these two together. Pull through all three. Go through this one, skip this one right in the center. Pull through all three, kind of tighten that up. And another two together. And that's just decreasing. Increases and decreases are what shape the crochet projects, blankets and sweaters. That would be kind of how you would do a collar for a V-neck sweater. 
crochet is pretty amazing to me. Helps keep my brain active. Most, most of my blankets I give away as gifts. I've kept a few for our house. Usually if you see me make one in the darker colors, that's probably something I'm going to keep. All right, we're at the top of the peak. One, two, and three. And you're just going to repeat that. Uh, it will be the same as these two rows. I'll meet you when we're at the very end. <laughs> I mean, that really matches. <laughs> All right, I'm on the last part of this first row of the pink. And again, you want to come down until you have one, two, three, four stitches left. So right here. Sorry if you can't see that pink against that other pink blanket. One, two, three, four. So I need two more. All right, and two together. And single crochet in the last two. All right, and just repeat that row. And that's your last row. When you get to the end, just fasten off and weave in your end. Oh, well, that's pretty. This, I like this a thousand percent better than when I filled it in. It's not quite such a dramatic drop and rise. Oh, I think it's really, really pretty. So finish that up and I will meet you when I start the bottom. Just make sure we get the count right on the bottom. It's a little bit different. Make sure you're on the right side. How it looks on the edge. Obviously these will all be woven in and then it comes up just not quite as steep. It would look super cute if you put little pom-poms on the edges here. I'm not going to do that because it's for a little baby. Isn't that pretty? And then the same on this side. All right, let's go down, start working on the bottom. All right, we're gonna work on the bottom. It's a bit different. I'm gonna start with the pink. I started with the vintage white, but then I realized it wouldn't be the same because we're upside down. So make sure that you're working on the right side and we're going to put stitch markers so we don't even have to worry about counting. And you see this little hole here? These were actually the mountain peaks because those are the single crochets, but we're upside down. So see, there's that little hole. Count back three stitches. One, two, three, and put a stitch marker in and, and do that at every, what looks like a dip now. It was actually a peak when we were working from the bottom up. And this has straightened out just a little bit. So we're going to have to adjust for that as well. There we go. So come all the way over here and join. And I'm just going to make the chain and count that as my first single crochet. So there's not too much bulk there. And come over here. And because I want to try to straighten this out a little bit here, let's come into this stitch. If it's too tight for you to get into, use a smaller hook just for this portion. 
So here, let's go in and make a decrease just so that we can start pulling that down a little bit. We want to angle that a little bit more. You don't have to, but it'll match the top better. And then you don't have to count, just come on down to your stitch marker and that's where we'll do our decreases. And I just didn't feel like counting on these last rows. <laughs> this was the easiest way. I will definitely try to find the easiest way to do things. Oh, I'm sorry if that pink is just too close to that color. Hopefully you can see it with my stitches into the green. So come into this stitch, you can go ahead and get rid of that stitch marker. And this is going to be a decrease. Go into that stitch, go into the next stitch, and pull through all three. Go into this stitch, skip that stitch where the little hole is, and pull through all three. Pull it kind of tight. The rest of the stitches need to be loose, but these decreases can be a little on the tighter side. It's just helping to pull it in, soften up that big angle. Okay, just go on up to the top. Now again, this is a little different because we don't have the three uh, single crochets for a peak. You just have to kind of feel it and pull on it and. Yeah, that looks good. That's, that's where I'm working into. And you will work in three single crochets because you need that to be able to round the corner. If you prefer, you can do two single crochets with a chain in between. And then when you come in the next row, you would go into that chain space. And that would work well as, also. Let me loosen up my yarn a little bit here. <laughs> it comes out of the skein nicely. I've just redone this blanket so many times. Kept changing my mind. I should have waited until I was completely finished and just done a sample, but I thought I'd do a tutorial as I went along. All right, so this is where I'm going to consider to be the top now. <laughs> and put three very loose single crochet. Just really pull that yarn through. That will help to round that corner. And now just come back down to the next stitch marker. And we're just going to do the same thing. Isn't it nice not counting? <laughs> In a way, counting the stitches makes you feel good because you know you're on the right track. This part doesn't matter about counting stitches. As long as you're in the right place to make your decreases. Okay, so there's my next stitch marker. Go in that stitch, go in the next stitch, which is actually a chain. <laughs> the next row will be a lot easier because you'll be working into single crochet stitches. Alright, I need to untangle my yarn because I was not very careful about pulling it together when I pulled it out. Um, but it's the same exact thing. That was my first decrease. Go into the next stitch, skip that space, go into the next stitch. One more decrease, put two stitches together, woo, and I've 
I really need to untangle this. Okay, so continue on. Okay, I'm at the end of the row. I want to do a decrease here. This is where it started straightening out on that edge, and I want it to be more of an angle. So just a little decrease there. See how that pulled that down a little bit. I, uh, I'm trying to determine if I want to come over one more stitch, but I think we're good. Chain one and turn. And you're going to do the same exact thing. I'm not going to decrease anymore at the beginning and at the end. I, th I think I have enough of an angle. If you think you need to, you can make a decrease just to pull it tighter. So continue the same pattern. Make it easy on yourself. Find that little hole, come back one, two, three, and put your stitch markers in each dip. And you don't have to count. So that'll be your second row at the end of the row. Uh, make Start your single crochet, don't complete it. Complete it with the vintage white and do two rows just like this. No decrease at the beginning though. And at the end of your second row with a vintage white, you can fasten off and you'll be finished, except for weaving in ends. If you're like me and always wait until the end to do that, <laughs> I will meet you at the end of the second row of the vintage white. My mountain sunrise blanket ended up being 36 inches wide by 52 inches long, which is a good size for a baby blanket, a toddler blanket, or um, just a small throw, what they call a lap gan, just to throw over your lap when you're reading or watching TV. Hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm.